I know. I know. Are you sick of me yet? I, <laughs> I can't stop, won't stop. Um, I get it. You know, Natalie Cole talks about in her version of the 12 days of Christmas on the 12th day. Do you realize I have ended up with 22 ladies dancing, 30 pipers piping, 36 drummers drumming, 40 maids of milking, 42 swans of swimming, 42 geese of laying, 40 golden rings. I know it's a little bit excessive, but this is 12th night. As Shakespeare's title says, 12th night or what you will, what you will, what you will, or what you are willing to receive, to do, to create, to make happen. Uh, this is the fifth and final video talking about the holiday season. Uh, two weeks ago, we started this on Wednesday, December 22nd. Uh, I encourage you to listen to any you've missed. Uh, they're here, posted in the group. Uh, they're on our Facebook page, Grateful, Ready, Open, Willing. They're on our YouTube channel, Grateful, Ready, Open, Willing, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and there'll be lots more coming in the new year. And you are welcome to su subscribe or follow or like or do whatever one does to not miss any of the content that we're putting out there. And it'll be very interesting, interesting even to me to see how this evolves and changes in the year ahead as we hopefully will see some positive um, uh, uh, changes in show business and uh, moves forward in terms of coming back to our Broadway stages. And, and we hope by the end of the year to be in a very different and a much more full of wonder place for all of us who love this work and love what we do. And I think that in this group, that's all of us creatives, creative people. Uh, so uh, tonight is the 12th night, 12th day of Christmas, Three Kings Day, Feast of the Epiphany. It's, uh, it's hard to talk without acknowledging what's going on in the world right now and what's going on in our country. Uh, it's extraordinary, um, but important to face truth and uh, to rise to who we truly are, whatever that may be in any given situation. Uh, and uh, there was a siege on the White House today uh, and an attempt to, uh, I guess, a coup, take over our government. Um, and as President Biden, uh, President-elect Biden reminded us, this is a, um, uh, this is a, a small group of extremists and not to be thought of as America or anything to fear. So hopefully, they will be put in their place and taken out, uh, and that will be done, and we can be get back to the peaceful restoration of our democracy. Um, that is my hope. That is my prayer. I don't want to appear tone deaf, but it's also important, I think, to acknowledge that, especially in the world today, so many things can happen at the same time, and so many things can be true at the same time. Some things can be true and other things can be true at the same time. Uh, a woman was shot today at the Capitol building during this siege by pro-Trump extremists um, and she died. That is a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, and that uh, happened. Uh, John Ossoff and Raphael Warnick uh, won the two Senate seats in Georgia. That happened. Um, there are, it's such a mixed bag. There are so many different things happening at once. So I wanna talk about Twelfth Night and the epiphany and what that means for us. Uh, and again, I wanna reiterate, as I've said in all of these talks, everyone is invited to this celebration. There is no, you believe this or that and therefore you can't play. That just doesn't exist here. Um, all of Christmas, all of these lights and these joys, all of these winter festivals, uh, solstice and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and uh, uh, what's the one on the 23rd, the, the more recent one, Human Humanity Day, all of these uh, um, beautiful festivals of finding light in the darkest time of the year are all kind of in one way or another about the same thing. They're about kindness, they're about love, they're about finding the light. Uh, and what an important thing for us to think about. So uh, if you'll bear with me, um, I, I kind of want to share with you something that um, I don't often share, but I think it's kind of worth sharing. And that is, I'm going to bring you over to um, a section of my holiday decorating that I'm a big fan of. I call it my King of Kings exhibit. I can't even get the, um, the camera here to be right. Uh, the, um, the King of Kings exhibit, what I do is I had some extra pieces from the nativity because you know i grew up italian so um i put those all together here and uh and so there's uh M malchior and belthazar and uh 
what was his name, uh, Gus, Gaspar, uh, The Three Kings. Uh, and then I mixed in um, the king of rock and roll, Elvis, uh, here. And, um, and then I mixed in the Burgermeister Meisterburger from Santa Claus is Coming to Town, because he was the king there. And then I mixed in King Tut. Uh, we have a little King Tut I got at the Metropolitan Museum over there. And uh, I mixed in King, uh, sorry, whoops, King Kong in the back here. And Coretta Scott King is in the back there. And the, the uh, Lion King from, um, I think he's from Bedknobs and Broomsticks. He might be uh, from Lion Witch in the Wardrobe. Uh, and King Syrup. Uh, <laughs> my friend Steve and Jeff and actually several friends have contributed to this over the years. But um, since we're celebrating Three Kings Day, it seemed like uh, it would be worthwhile to uh, let that, uh, to share that that it's, uh, hey, if we're gonna have King and Kings, let's invite all the Kings. If we're gonna have uh, Twelfth Night, let's invite everyone. Uh, let's invite everyone who's ever um, uh, enjoyed that Shakespeare play. Okay, here's a fun moment too, to share with you. Um, so some years ago, there was an audition uh, for, I think it was National Shakespeare Theater, it was an EPA, and a woman came in and announced her monologue, and she said, I'll be doing Twelfth Night, role of voila. Isn't that charming and wonderful and delightful? She just had no idea. But all right, um, so epiphany. I want to talk about epiphany, and uh, I want to be very brief tonight. But um, epiphany is a word uh, with which most of us in show business and in theater are familiar because we understand that there are moments of epiphany in scenes and in plays uh, that actors need to play and need to find. Uh, According to Merriam-Webster, an epiphany is a usually sudden manifestation or perception of the essential nature or meaning of something, uh, or an intuitive grasp of reality through something such as an event, usually simple and striking, or an illuminating discovery, realization or disclosure, a revealing scene or moment. So today we celebrate epiphany. And I wonder about welcoming epiphany into our own lives. Uh, it's a new year. Uh, the Georgia Senate uh, uh, runoff election results are in. We're 10 months into this world pandemic. There was a siege on the White House uh, by Trump extremists. Uh, vaccinations have begun. There's over 15 million vaccinations that have already been given out in 37 countries and over 5 million of those are in the United States. Uh, so we've been dealing with this world pandemic for 10 months and now we seem to be on the road toward making things right or as best as we can make them. Uh, we are still looking at over 21 million cases of uh, coronavirus in the U.S. and over 357,000 deaths uh, as of today. Uh, 86.5 million cases world over and 1.8 million deaths. So this is still a very serious thing with which we are all contending. Uh, what's happening in Los Angeles is terrifying. They're running out of room in hospitals. They're running out of ambulances and equipment. Um, all of these things are happening simultaneously. Uh, so uh, the one I want to concentrate on specifically in light of this feast of the epiphany is Stacey Abrams. Um, not to make this political, but what do you do when you lose? Stacey Abrams lost the Georgia governor's race in 2018. She could have sat in that injustice. I mean, if you haven't seen the documentaries about the Georgia Senate race, uh, sorry, the uh, Georgia governor's race and the Stacey Abrams, Brian Kemp uh, election and what happened there, uh, it's definitely worth looking them up and seeing them. There's a, a wonderful one put out, I think it's by Move On, uh, that's about 40 minutes long, that explains how the, the um, election rosters were just deleted to disenfranchise people of their vote, which is their right as a citizen. And she lost so unjustly, so unfairly. And look what she did with that. I, I, I don't even know how to put into words how inspiring that is for every one of us. Um, you know, so many of us in this group, so many of us as creatives ha have lost now 
almost a year. We're losing a year or two of our lives and our livelihood in show business, in Broadway theater, in musical theater, in acting, in uh, my work as a casting director. So many people's work as general managers, costume people, uh, whatever area of the business you work in. All of the waiters in the Times Square area who where New York lost all of the tourism due to the coronavirus uh, pandemic. For all of us, certainly for all of us in the Broadway theater community, what can we do to transform our loss? That's the question that I think is just blazing before us uh, on this celebration, on this 12th night, as we go into the new year. As I've talked about in previous uh, uh, holiday talks here in this group, we, we celebrate the holidays, we go through them, and uh, then we kind of get into the new year. So even though technically the new year, New Year's Eve is December 31st, which is the, I think, sixth day of Christmas, and then New Year begins on January 1st, which is the seventh day of Christmas, when we get to Twelfth Night, uh, tonight, January 6th, that to me is when the holidays are coming to their conclusion, it's been a rough year. That This beauty over here is going to stay up until the weekend, I'm, I'm sure. And probably so is everything else. But uh, I'm already back to work. There's a few little projects here and there that we're getting to work on while Broadway is dormant, uh, things in development and such. And uh, I will be fully back to work tomorrow. But, uh, but for tonight, the holidays come to their conclusion, and then we look to the new year. And my question for all of us, for myself, and I share it with you, is... What is, uh, I just did that thing I always tell actors not to do when I'm coaching on monologues. Do not point to yourself when you say I. Nobody does that, but I just did it. Um, let's forget that that happened because it'll come back to me in classes and, you know. All right. Uh, the question is, what is our own individual star? What is the light that we are following? What are we following? Are we, are we willing to get on that camel's back and ride uphill through very rough terrain all night long? Where do we find our light? Are we willing to see our light? Are we willing, grateful, ready, open, willing to look? To look beyond the terrible news of the day and the awfulizing and the, oh my God, this terrible thing happened and yes, it's terrible. Are we willing to get past that and find our light, our guidance? What are we willing to do? What are we willing, grateful, ready, open, and willing to do to achieve our dreams? Let's look at our own willingness. Let's look at a, an inspiration like Stacey Abrams, turning grief and loss into action. Uh, I mean, they, they took the governorship, they took that election away from her, and she took the whole Senate away from them. In four years, this woman of action of power and and frankly as it can't be said enough thank you black women i i pointed out on my blog four years ago that the demographics the way they broke down the largest group that voted against donald trump in the 2016 election was black women every other demographic had some significant percentage of pro trump pro, pro trump voters okay again <laughs> It's a, it's, it's a day when it's tough to not get political because this is all on everyone's mind right now. It's kind of come to a head today in many ways. But in our individual journeys, what are we willing to do to achieve our dreams? Let's look at our own willingness. Are we ready? Are we open to seeing our star, the star we as creatives choose to follow? Are we open to grace? Are we willing to see the epiphany that is right before our eyes. That's the question I have with me as we enter this new year. And I invite all of you to join me in that question, to feel free to put into the comments or put into the chat uh, anything you wanna say about your star, your readiness, your openness, your willingness to see it, your willingness to follow, your willingness to, to get on that camel's back and ride. Um, feel free to keep the conversation going, whether you're watching this now live or whether you're watching it in replay. Um, this is Arnold Manjoli for Grateful, Ready, Open, Willing. And I am so grateful to be in this new year with you and for us to uh, continually um, 
uh, continue to talk about it and continue to find our way together and to find our light. Uh, I, it would not surprise me if Broadway were back sometime this year, perhaps more towards the end of the year, perhaps even into 2022. But we're coming back and hopefully we'll be coming back better and brighter and that will depend on all of us and what we're willing to do to bring our light to it. And whether this period of dormancy, this what I refer to as this grand pause, has um, helped to nourish us and if we've used that time to create something better, to to bring our light, to shine our light in a way that will help to make those lights brighter when they come back. Uh, that is my hope. Uh, thank you so much and have a wonderful 12th night or what you will. <laughs>